and hello everybody, I hope everybody's alright, I hope everybody's looking after themselves and welcome to Freedom Fighter News. We've got some amazing, amazing, amazing uh, stuff on the way uh, this week. We'll be out and about across millions and millions and millions of different places the 26th to the 28th of august leeds festival is on so if you want to go to leeds festival the 26th to the 28th is the dates they are running it tickets are available at all good retailers everywhere we also have the amazing World Strongest Man taking place at the First Direct Arena as well on April the 2nd. We have the phenomenal Gary Barlow playing on the 11th of December at Leeds First Direct Arena as well. We have the phenomenal Offspring featuring The Hive at the Leeds First Direct Arena on November the 30th. We have the phenomenal Status Quo playing this year and remarking on a world tour. They will be playing Friday the 25th of November at Aberdeen, the 26th in Glasgow, the 28th in Leeds. The 30th in Brighton. The 1st of December in Bournemouth. And the 3rd in London. Tickets are available for status quo at all good retailers everywhere. WWE are returning to Leeds First Direct Arena on Monday, November the 8th. Tickets are available at www.wwelive.com. Blondie is remarking on a UK tour in April, starting off in Glasgow, then she's going to Cardiff, then she's going to London, then she's going to Manchester, Liverpool, Leeds and many, many more. Simply Red are eating Scarborough First Direct and many, many more. They'll be eating Scarborough Open Air Theatre on Friday the 22nd of July. The phenomenal Frankie Valley will be hitting Scarborough Open Air Theatre on Saturday the 25th of June. Jay MacDonald will be playing with special guests on the 4th of June 2022 for the Diamond Jubilee at Scarborough Open Air Theatre. Tears for Fears are returning to Scarborough Open Air Theatre on the 16th of July. Bloodstock Festival is returning to the UK the 11th to the 14th of August. And the phenomenal Billy Idol is returning to the UK as well in June, starting off at Glasgow. And then he's going to London, then he's going to Manchester, then he's going to Cardiff, then he's going to Birmingham, and then he's going to Leeds. For all these events, tickets are available at all good tea retailers everywhere, direct from the arenas as well, and of course, Ticketmaster and all good retailers everywhere. Please do not avoid buying them from Ticket Scouts. And please make sure you do follow the COVID-19 guidance given by the government, which can be found on the arena or theatre or venues website. Man who left child in hotel room so he could celebrate Middlesbrough win arrested for child neglect. A Middlesbrough fan has been arrested on suspicion of child neglect after he left his 11-year-old child in a hotel to go and celebrate the team's win in town. Greater Manchester Police say they were called in the early hours of Saturday with a report of concern for the welfare of a child, and found the boy was asleep alone in a hotel room in Trafford. Police looked after the child while their unhappy mum travelled down from the northeast to pick them up. A 35-year-old man has been arrested on suspicion of child neglect. He remains in police custody for questioning. A tweet from GMP Stratford said, Borough away fan arrested for child neglect last night, after choosing to leave his 11 years child in the hotel after the game whilst he went into town celebrating their victory drinking. 
we have looked after the child with an unhappy mum on her way down from N. East to collect him. Police and emergency services attend scene of sudden death in Belfast. Police are investigating the sudden death of a man in North Belfast. They were called to Glen Rosa Street shortly before 1.30 p.m. on Friday, February 4. Forensic officers entered the house around 5 p.m. this evening. The counselor Dean McCulloch posted on social media, Police are at the scene of a serious incident in Glen Rosa Street, Tigers Bay. I would appeal to people, particularly young people, to allow them the time and space they need. They are there for this incident alone. In a statement, the PSNI said, Police are currently at the scene of the sudden death of a man in the Glen Rosa Street area of Belfast. There are no further details at this time. Marillion pull no punches with new video for the emotive murder machines. Prague cover stars Marillion will release their latest studio album an hour before it's dark in March. Prague cover stars Marillion have released a brand new video for the emotive murder machines, which you can watch in full below. The song is taken from the band's forthcoming album an hour before it's dark, which is released through Ear Music on March 4. The new song with its haunting I put my arms around her, and killed her with love refrain, was born in the challenging times of lockdown and social distancing and has become so much more than just a mirror of our times, more than a song that deals with the precious as well as dark sides of human relationships. I tried not to write about the virus, explains singer Steve Hogarth. But it's been so much a part of life for the past two years that it kept creeping in. The terrifying reality that to wrap my arms around my father or mother could ultimately kill them, gave birth to this song. The lyric was then developed to hint at jealousy and heartbreak, the pain of watching the woman you love embrace another man, or the emotional murder of the serial adulterer. And, of course, the arms of the superpowers, and the psychopaths who sometimes have their fingers on the triggers. Beware the murder machines. An hour before its dark will be available as CD plus DVD Digipack, CD Digipack, Jewel Box CD, Blu-ray Softbox, 2LP Gatefold and Limited Edition Colored 2LP, Orange. Further exclusive formats will be available from the band's official album store, Drunk Man Caused £9,000 Worth of Damage by Smashing a Pleads Store and Five Cars with Baseball Bat During Red Mist Moment After Watching Wrestling. A man caused £9,000 worth of damage when he smashed up five cars and the windows of a store in Leeds during a drunken rampage. A man caused £9,000 worth of damage when he smashed up five cars and the windows of a store in Leeds during a drunken rampage. Andrew Scott told the police that he could not remember carrying out the criminal damage spree after he spent the evening drinking vodka and watching wrestling on TV at his home in Hunslet. Leeds. Leeds Crown Court heard Scott used a baseball bat to cause around £3,000 of damage by using a baseball bat to smash windows at the range, City South Retail Park, in the early hours of December 13 last year. Scott, 40, then turned his attention to a BMW in the car park. He used the weapon to smash windows and the driver's side door of the vehicle. Scott then walked to nearby Arthington Street and began to attack residents' cars. People living in the street were woken by the noise and contacted police. Damage to one car cost £2,100 to repair. A police dog was used to find Scott. Officers arrested the defendant using pepper spray and he dropped the baseball bat. A claw hammer Two knives and a half-empty bottle of vodka were found in the rucksack he had been carrying. When interviewed Scott told officers that the incident was a blur. He said he could recall leaving his home around 3 a.m. after drinking vodka and watching a wrestling match on TV. Scott, of Arthington View, Hunslet, pleaded guilty to six counts of criminal damage, possessing an offensive weapon and possessing a knife in a public place. Holly Clegg, mitigating, said, he couldn't really explain why he behaved the way he did. Ems Clegg said Scott was struggling with his mental health after losing his job due to the pandemic.
She added, the pressures of lockdown led to a red mist moment. A probation service report assessed Scott as a low risk of reoffending. Scott was given a four month prison sentence, suspended for 18 months. He was ordered to do 180 hours of unpaid work and complete 20 rehabilitation activity requirement days. Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg takes $29 billion hit as Meta share price plunges. Mr. Zuckerberg owns just under 13% of the company which has seen a quarter of its value wiped out following disappointing quarterly results which revealed falling Facebook user numbers and highlighted the threat from TikTok. Mark Zuckerberg has seen $29 billion wiped off his net worth after the share price of Meta, owner of Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp, saw a record one-day plunge. The 26% collapse in the stock erased more than $200 billion from Meta's market capitalization, the biggest single-day drop in value for a U.S. company ever seen. It was prompted by disappointing quarterly results showing Facebook's first ever fall in daily users in its 18-year history and a squeeze on ad revenues, while highlighting growing pressure from social media rivals such as TikTok. Mr. Zuckerberg, Facebook's founder and chief executive of Meta, owns about 12.8% of the company, which is still valued at more than $660 billion. But the fall in his net worth to $85 billion takes the 37-year-old down to 12th in the Forbes Billionaires list, having been rated at 5th last year. Advertisement Meta's results showed a dip in Facebook daily active user numbers to 1.929 billion in the last three months of last year, down from 1.93 billion in the previous quarter while quarterly profits were 8% lower than a year earlier. For 2021 as a whole, it still made a profit of $39.4 billion, up 35% on the prior year. But much in the gigantic valuations of America's tech giants is based on the prospect of future earnings and Meta disappointed on that score with revenues for the first quarter of this year penciled in at a lower than expected level. That prompted a sharp slump in the share price in after-hours trading following the release of the results late on Wednesday, which was confirmed when New York markets opened on Thursday. Tech stocks have already been under pressure since the start of this year as investors fret about the growing prospect of U.S. interest hikes. That is because higher rates make it less attractive to bet on future returns from growth stocks. However in recent days other tech giants are back in favor with well-received results. Amazon's share price added 15% in after-hours trading on Thursday after it hiked the subscription price for members of its Prime program and reported a 50% rise in profits to $33.4 billion. That put founder Jeff Bezos, who owns about a tenth of the business, in line for a $20 billion increase in net worth if the gains were replicated when markets opened on Friday. Elsewhere, Snap, owner of Snapcat, illustrated the volatility in the sector as its shares rose more than 50% in after-hours trading on Thursday, after posting a quarterly profit for the first time and reporting better than expected growth in user numbers. It had plunged by 24% during regular trading earlier in the day following Meta's slump. Drugs and cash seized from property raids across the city. Police fighting organized crime in Bradford have made arrests and seized drugs and cash after raiding multiple properties across the city. Bradford District Police's Operation Precision Team is continuing inquiries and questioning suspects today after executing early morning warrants in both Bradford District and elsewhere. Officers from the Bradford Program Precision Team and West Yorkshire Police Protective Services Crime executed six warrants in parts of Bradford including the Manningham, Cello Heights and the Wetley Road areas. A warrant was also executed in Oldham. A total of three men were arrested on suspicion of possession with intent to supply controlled drugs and a man was arrested on suspicion of firearms offences. Police also seized a large amount of Class A drugs and cash.
Program Precision was formed to target serious and organized criminality in West Yorkshire and currently has specialist units in all five of the force's policing districts. The teams work with local officers and wider force resources to specifically target criminal networks operating in the hearts of communities as well as their accomplices at a regional level. DCI Andy Farrell of Bradford District Police said, West Yorkshire Police is determined to tackle organized crime in our communities and we are progressing our inquiries today after executing a number of planned raids across the city. They have resulted in four arrests and Class A drugs being taken off our streets as part of a long-running investigation into drugs and firearms crime. He added, we look to bring all our resources to bear to break up such organized criminal activity and continue to appeal to communities to come forwards with information about offenses such as drug dealing on their streets. Reports can be made to Bradford Police on 101 or anonymously to Crime Stoppers on 0800, treble 5, treble 1 and all intelligence is examined. The Housing Support Fund is a fund that has been given by the main authority government to all political councils. That's every local authority across England. It's a fund to help with food, shopping, electric bills and lots of other things like that. You have to claim it now from your local council. You have to go on the council website to claim it. You have till March 2022 to actually go out and claim it. So get out, get claiming it, and let's get this world a better place for the people that are in need. Cash jailed a couple who left a man with lifelong physical and mental scars after a violent kidnap last summer have been sentenced to over 15 years in prison. Stephen Winnick, 41L, beat the ex-partner of Sarah Davies, 33R, with a metal pole at an address in Hashshaw and proceeded to throw boiling water at his head, torture him, and threaten that he'd be buried. The victim's mum also lost hundreds of pounds during the ordeal, and a victim surcharge and compensation agreement is due to take place. The court heard it was torture, and that Davies was complicit in the thuggery, as she and Winnick were ordered to serve six years, four months and nine years respectively, following a resounding investigation by Hash Oldham said. Detective Sergeant Gary Aldrin of GMP Oldham said, Whatever sentence was to be passed down today, nothing could change the fact that the victim of this prolonged and violent attack will be subjected to lifelong physical and mental scars. This brutal ordeal has left a man traumatized and the impact cannot be measured. Winnick and Davies should be utterly ashamed of their remorseless and almost sadistic actions and it is right that they spend such a lengthy spell behind bars to reflect on the misery they have inflicted on an innocent man. Serious and violent crime such as this can often go unnoticed in communities but this case shows that any information we get about such attacks will be robustly investigated and offenders will be resoundingly brought to justice. Officers are concerned for the safety of a missing teenager from Hadfield. Macy Wright was last seen at her home in the Hadfield area of Glossop at 2 p.m. yesterday 31 Jan. It is believed that 13-year-old Macy, who was last seen wearing a black jacket and shorts, may have made her way to the Levenshall area of Manchester. Anyone who may be able to help officers locate Macy is asked to contact Derbyshire Police using any of the billow methods, including reference 887 to 310122. Facebook send us a private message to Derbyshire Constabulary Twitter direct message our contact center on at Derpal contact website complete the online contact form www Derbyshire Police UK contact us, phone call us on 101. A man has been jailed for 40 years after being found guilty of abusing two young girls. Jamie Dawson was charged with 15 offenses against the two girls who were both under the age of 13 at the time of the abuse which occurred in the late 2000s and early 2010s. The 41-year-old carried out the abuse in the South Normanton area with the extent of his crimes being revealed in 2017. Dawson, previously of Garden Crescent, South Normanton, denied the offences had taken place forcing the pair to wait years before seeing justice, but only after a lengthy trial. Despite the delay, the survivors of his abuse remained determined and on Friday 28 January, saw him jailed at Nottingham Crown Court for 40 years after being found guilty of all 14 charges of the raping a girl under the age of 13 and one charge of assaulting a girl under the age of 13 by touching. 
In statements read out at court the two women explained the devastating impact the abuse had on them. Both women told the court how they had attempted to take their lives on multiple occasions as well as the toll it has taken on their physical health and maintaining relationships with friends and family. One of the survivors told the court, He has completely destroyed my life and yet he will not even admit to it. He has no remorse and seems to feel no guilt. There is not one aspect of my life that hasn't been negatively affected by what he has done to me. I am just finally glad that what he did to me has been acknowledged, but sadly not by him. The other survivor shed further light on the extent to which the abuse has damaged their life. I have been diagnosed with PTSD because of his actions. I have suffered flashbacks, countless sleepless nights, self-harm and I have tried to take my own life on multiple occasions. The abuse has caused issues in my relationship with my partner and friends, causing me to push those closest to me away, out of fear that they will hurt or leave me. D.C. Brett Turner, from Derbyshire Constabulary's public protection team, said, The first and most important thing I can do is thank the two survivors of this abuse for the support and determination during what has been a lengthy investigation and court process. Without their support and resilience Jamie Dawson would not have been brought to justice. His actions, and then continued denials, show him to be nothing short of evil. The sentence imposed on him is one of the highest I have seen as an officer and is testament to the truly horrific crimes he committed. Well it goes no way to repairing the damage that he wrought on these two women I hope that this is the beginning beginning of a new, brighter, chapter for them both, free of Dawson's shadow survivors of abuse, no matter if it took place today, last week, last year, or many decades ago, can report to the force at any time of day or night using any of the below methods, Facebook send us a private message to Derbyshire Constabulary Twitter direct message our contact center on at Derpel contact website complete the online contact form www Derbyshire Police UK contact us, phone call us on 101. You are also able to speak directly to SV2, an independent sexual violence charity based in Derbyshire who can provide support services whether you wish to make a report to the police. You can call their confidential advice line on 01773746115 or visit their website http www.svd.org uk. A gang who shot at a rival criminal as part of a feud have been jailed for more than 30 years. Ismail Hussein invited his drug-dealing rival to a meeting to resolve an ongoing feud between the pair at Merway Lane, Derby. The victim, along with a friend, drove to the quiet suburban location just before 6 p.m. on Tuesday 12 May 2020. Hussein was already waiting in a white UW golf with three other men Dana Yuri Ashat, Andre Boucher and Abdullah Mohammed. As the victim walked towards the car, he quickly realized Hussein had not come alone. Bushay and one of the other men pulled out a pair of handguns and fired five shots. The victim scrambled back into the car, amazingly not hurt by the gunfire, and fled the scene. Detectives investigating the incident found the meeting, and subsequent shooting, had been set up following an incident that occurred at Hussein's family home in Sale Street, Derby, on 27 April 2020. At around 10 p.m. a brick was thrown through the window of the terraced house in an escalation of a feud concerning the supply of drugs in the local area. Seeking retribution, Hussein enlisted the help of fellow criminals from Oxfordshire in the form of Bushay, Riyasad and Mohammed to target the man believed to be behind the attack. Intelligence received from the Southeast Regional Organized Crime Unit showed how the group planned the shooting securing the guns, car and false registration plates used in the attack from others in the Derby and Oxfordshire areas. In total nine men pleaded guilty to their part in the shooting with the court at present at the shooting admitting to charge of conspiracy to possess a firearm with intent to cause fear of violence. While Omar Ali, Zain Riyashat, Numan Hussein, Mohammed Zen and Hamza Shahs had all admitted to assisting an offender. Over two days at Derby Crown Court, eight of the nine men were sentenced to the following jail terms. Ismail Hussein, 24, of Merway Lane, Derby, seven years and two months. Andre Boucher, 35, of HMP Nottingham, seven years and eight months. Abdullah Mohammed, 25, of HMP Billingdon, seven years and two months. Omar Ali, 
23, of HMP Billingdon 19 months Zain Riyas Hat, 25, of HMP Billingdon 19 months Numan Hussein Aka Khan, 27, of Crew Street Derby 17.5 months Mohamed Zen, 27, of Stonehill Road, Derby 17.5 months Hamza Shazhad, 24, of Chestnut Avenue, Derby 36 months Daniel Riyas Hat, 24, of No Fixed Abode, will be sentenced at a future date. Detective Constable Alistair Orpwood, who led the investigation, said that nobody was killed or seriously hurt during this shooting was thanks to sheer good fortune. The firing of two handguns in a quiet suburban street shows the level of violence that this group are prepared to use and their jailing is clearly good news for the communities in Derbyshire and Oxfordshire. This type of incident is thankfully relatively rare in our county and I hope that the investigation and conviction of this group sends the clear message that it will not be tolerated by this force. Detective Constable Amabone of the Southeast Regional Organized Crime Unit Seracu, said. Intelligence developed by Seracu led to the swift identification and arrest of Andre Boucher. By working in collaboration with Derbyshire Police and the National Crime Agency, Seracu was able to assist in this investigation by ensuring this individual was quickly apprehended, allowing him to be brought to face justice for a crime which, only by chance, did not have far more serious consequences. A police officer from Derbyshire who punched the suspect during a domestic incident was judged to have used reasonable force. Ash is uncharged. We've charged a serving officer with a sexual offence after a complaint was made to our professional standards branch. PC James Holt, from the Hash Sign Manchester Division, will appear at Manchester and Damp, Salford Magistrates next month. West Yorkshire Police Contact Points, Sunday 6th FEBTHE following contact points will be held this weekend. 9 a.m. until 10 a.m. at Gilderson Co-op 10.30 until 12 p.m. Morley Town Centre outside of Sandton Dare Bank on Queen Street 2 p.m. until 3 p.m. at Morrison's Rothwell. Commercial Street no appointment is required. South Yorkshire breaking. Ahmed jailed for over five years as victims speak out in cut former member of the House of Lords, Natsir Ahmed, has been jailed for five and a half years at Sheffield Crown Court today. The judge passed the sentence after hearing statements from the abuser's two victims about the lasting impact Ahmed's actions had on them over the last 40 years. Ahmed, formerly of East Bawtree Road, appeared after being convicted of a series of sex offences dating back to the late 1960s and mid-1970s. The 64-year-old was found guilty of two counts of attempted rape and one count of indecent assault by a unanimous jury on Wednesday the 5th of January. Police initially received reports of the offences in 2016. When the now adult victims came forward and disclosed abuse they had suffered when they were children, aged between 4 and 11 years old. Ahmed attempted to rape his first victim, who was a young girl at the time of the abuse twice at an address in Rotherham. At the same address, he also indecently assaulted his second victim, a boy. In his statement, Ahmed's victim described the former peer's perverse actions as having a damaging effect on his relationship with his own children. He also called out the fact that he has never shown remorse nor regret for his actions. Reading her statement out in court, Ahmed's first victim described his conviction as a victory for all sexual abuse victims. After suffering years of turmoil, and feeling like she was being suffocated, 
She is now ready to pass that burden to her abuser. Both survivors praised South Yorkshire Police investigator DC Joanne Smithson, with one adding, I would like to offer my sincere and heartfelt gratitude to South Yorkshire Police for fulfilling their motto, Justice with Courage through the actions of the investigating officer, DC Joanne Smithson. You never gave up on us and you continued to seek justice for us. Speaking after the sentencing, DC Smithson said, once again, I would like to recognize both victims in this case who have been incredibly brave and patient through a lengthy investigation and subsequent trial. I am pleased that Ahmed's jail sentence reflects his abhorrent actions, absence of remorse, and demonstrates that nobody is above the law. If you are a victim of a non-recent offense, it's never too late to come forward. You have a right to be heard and we are here to help. Two teenagers jailed following the fatal stabbing of Rhys Danzi have been named for the first time. Two teenage boys who were jailed on January 21, 2022, after being convicted of causing the death of 15-year-old Rhys Danzi from Bolton, have been named for the first time. Following a hearing at Manchester Crown Court this morning, 4 February, Judge Farby made the decision to lift the reporting restrictions which prevented the boys' names from being made public due to their age. Mark Nuttall, August 11, 2005, of Farnworth, Bolton, was jailed for 15 years after being found guilty of murder. James White, May 24, 2006, of Farnworth, Bolton, was jailed for six years after being found guilty of manslaughter. Hashtag arrests. We've arrested three suspects this morning following the serious assault of a teenage boy in the Arndale Center in Hashtag Manchester last week. Officers from our city center neighborhood team and from our dedicated response to violent personal robberies, Operation Valiant, targeted addresses in the Hashtag Newton Heath, Hashtag Moston and Hashtag Miles Platting areas of the city earlier today. Three boys, aged 14, 16 and 17, have been taken to custody to be questioned on suspicion of Section 18 assault and violent disorder. The arrests follow extensive inquiries conducted by officers since the incident shortly after 7.20 p.m. on Friday 28 January. Inquiries are ongoing and anyone with information is encouraged to contact police. Chief Inspector Wignall, of our city centre neighbourhood team, said, extensive inquiries including assessment of CCTV and mobile phone footage, have been carried out ever since this incident occurred, which has resulted in three arrests relating to last Friday's incident. We've seen unacceptable antisocial behavior in our city center of late and we are clear in saying we will not tolerate it, and those involved who we haven't already spoken to should expect further police contact in the coming days and weeks. Anyone with information or footage of last Friday's disorder should contact detectives on 0161-856-4409 Quoting Incident 2488 of January 28, 2022. Details can be passed anonymously to the independent charity Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 one, one, one. Tragedy as person dies after 999 response at Yorkshire Beach The response team, including the Coast Guard helicopter, police and ambulance crews were at the scene A person has tragically died after an emergency incident at a Yorkshire Beach. Cleveland police have confirmed a sudden death in Saltburn, North Yorkshire. A huge emergency response was launched close to Huntcliffe at the Seaside Beauty Spot on Wednesday February 2nd. The response team including the Coast Guard helicopter, police and ambulance crews were at the scene from around 6 p.m. earlier this week. A witness said they saw the helicopter and a lifeboat in the area and police were parked near the ship in, reports Teesside Live. The RNLA told Teesside Live two boats had been launched as part of a search for a missing person and added the incident had been resolved by the police. A witness said they saw the helicopter and a lifeboat in the area and police were parked near the ship in, reports Teesside Live. The RNLA told Teesside Live two boats had been launched as part of a search for a missing person and added the incident had been resolved by the police. Cleveland Police has now confirmed the incident related to a sudden death. Appeal for information after fatal collision in York, police car, 
We're appealing for witnesses and information following a serious collision involving a man on an electric bike and a female pedestrian yesterday afternoon on the cycle path 268 at the back of Fifth Avenue in York. The collision happened around 3 p.m. when the cyclist was traveling towards Osbaldwick on a black and yellow electric bike whilst the pedestrian was walking with two other women in the opposite direction. The 24-year-old woman sustained minor injuries and was taken to hospital by ambulance for treatment. The cyclist, a 30-year-old man, received emergency medical treatment by paramedics from land and air ambulances at the scene but was sadly pronounced dead. If you witness the incident or have any other information which could assist the investigation please email nicola.peters at northyorkshire.police.uk or call 101, select option 2 and ask to speak to the major collision investigation team. Please quote reference number 12,220,019,799 when providing details. Man charged after police operation New Line, Greengates Bradford Police have charged a man after an operation in New Line, Greengates Bradford. James Callahan 30 of New Line has been charged with four offenses, arson reckless as to whether life was endangered public nuisance, criminal damage and assault of an emergency worker. He has been remanded into custody and is due to appear at Bradford Magistrates Court this morning. 4th of February, Detective Chief Inspector Andy Farrell of Bradford SID said, after a police operation at New Line, Greengates on Wednesday, we have charged a man with several offenses. I would like to thank the public for their patience on Wednesday whilst we brought the matter to a safe conclusion. A man from Bradford has been jailed for 10 years after being convicted of county lines and modern-day slavery offenses. Hassam Hussein, 24 of Norman Crescent, Bradford was found guilty of nine offenses at Bradford Crown Court on 21 January. The offenses were, possession with intent to supply heroin possession with intent to supply crack cocaine offer to supply heroin offer to supply crack cocaine facilitate the travel of another with a view to exploitation section 47 assault concerned in the supply of heroin concerned in the supply of crack cocaine possession of criminal property Hussein was linked to the supply of over one kilogram of crack and heroin street deals between May and November 2020 Police in Calderdale are appealing for information following an incident where an elderly male was burgled. The incident occurred yesterday, 3.02, at around 4.35 p.m. on Mount Pleasant Avenue in Halifax. It was reported that two males attended the rear of a property posing as workmen advising the resident that he owed them money for work on his drains. A third male is also believed to be involved. The victim handed over an amount of cash before the suspects took his bank card and security pin. The suspects left the address in what is believed to be a silver Volvo and several transactions were made using the card. The suspects have been described as white males, aged between 20-30 and wearing dark clothes. Police investigating a fire at a school in Calderdale have charged a man with burglary and arson. Aaron Foster, aged 19, of Mixenden has been remanded to appear before Bradford Magistrates tomorrow. The charges relate to a fire at Ash Green Primary School in Mixenden on Tuesday. Get your car washed this weekend. The crews at Illingworth Fire Station will hold a charity car wash on Sunday 6 February from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. to raise money for the Ash Green School Community Fund. Crime gang that plotted to sell guns and kill rival in revenge shooting jailed for total of 80 years. The firearms involved in the plot included IC-47 assault rifles and Scorpion and Uzi machine guns, everything an assassin might want, the judge at Manchester Crown Court was told. A crime gang that plotted to sell deadly automatic guns and kill a rival in a revenge shooting have been jailed for a total of 80 years. They were caught when investigators cracked the codes of a secret encrypted phone system used by organized criminals across Europe. One gang member was known as Assassin's Creed, another had the nickname Legend Killer. The firearms involved in the plot included IC-47 assault rifles and Scorpion and Uzi machine guns, everything an assassin might want, the judge at Manchester Crown Court was told. In one episode, 
three guns and 300 rounds of ammunition were sold for £37,000, delivered by a gang member on a bike in the car park of a convenience store in Warrington, Cheshire. Advertisement In a decoded message on the villains in Crochat phone network, two gang members discussed the murder target and wrote, Oh yes, he's a dead man. Amaya Zaya, 34, from Eccles in Greater Manchester, was jailed for 25 years after admitting a plot to possess firearms with intent to endanger life. A similar possession charge in conspiracy to supply cocaine and cannabis. For the rest of the gang, Heich Patel was jailed for 7 years and 5 months. Robert Brazendale to 11 years and 3 months. Brandon Moore to 11 years and 5 months. Jordan Waring to 8 years and 7 months and Louis Coleman to six years and nine months. Neil Gardner, National Crime Agency Operations Manager, said, The weapons we took off the street and out of the crime group's hands were some of the most lethal around with a truly devastating capability. And seizing these weapons which are capable of firing multiple rounds per second, we have saved lives and protected the public. The offenders thought they were safe using encrypted combs, but working with the Crown Prosecution Service and Greater Manchester Police. We built a solid case that resulted in the men admitting their involvement. We will continue to do everything we can with partners at home and abroad to prevent organised crime groups trafficking firearms. Revenge Plan The revenge plan was launched after two men, Brandon Moore and Jordan Waring. Both 24 survived a shooting in Kensal, Salford, in April 2020. They began plotting a tit for tat shooting with accomplice Amaya Zaya, who was known to associates as Assassin's Creed. He asked them to find the target with a text message promising, and we will end it. Days later, Zaya sent a list of guns for sale, including AK 47s, Scorpions users and ammunition to Bilal Khan, 33, who was known as Legend Killer. Through the breaking of the Encrochat codes, Binker pursued the gang's gun trafficking and discovered Robert Brazendale, 34, working as a quartermaster and courier of guns to other organized crime gangs. In one deal he drove an AK-47 to a man who paid £10,500 for the rifle. On another day he made three firearms deliveries. Brazendale fled to Spain but was arrested in a stipona on the Costa del Sol several months later and extradited. Another courier, Potel, 27, handed over £37,000 for a scorpion, an Uzi, a Taurus Brazil revolver and ammunition and drove them to London where Metropolitan Police later found them hidden behind a false wall in a house in North London. And sent details of the murder plot to GMP, whose investigation led to the men being charged with firearms and drugs offences. Brazendale was jailed for 11 years and three months after admitting a plot to transfer prohibited firearms. Moore got 11 years and 5 months, Khan got 10 years and 8 months, and Waring 8 years and 7 months. Patel was jailed for 7 years and 5 months. A sixth man, Louis Coleman, 23, from Salford, was jailed for six years and nine months after admitting cocaine and ketamine supply. Detective Constable Stephen Walker, of GMP Salford's organized crime unit, said, This group of men undoubtedly posed a significant threat to the city of Salford and it's right that they'll now spend a majority of their adult years behind bars. The weapons that they were in possession of and the conspiracy they were planning could have proved to be a lethal combination and the work we've been able to do with the National Crime Agency has certainly saved at least one life. Police investigating serious sexual offending in Bradford have charged a man with offences against a number of victims. Mohammed Ishan Khan, aged 31 of Durham Road in Bradford will appear before Bradford magistrates tomorrow charged with three sexual assault offences allegedly committed on a female victim at the Velvet Mill Complex in Lillycroft Road on 27 January, 2022.
He has also been charged with offences of attempted rape and two sexual assault offences alleged to have occurred against another female victim on August 7, 2021. The 31-year-old will also appear charged with an attempted sexual assault and two sexual assaults on a third victim alleged to have taken place on October 4, 2020. Inquiries into the offences remain ongoing by the West Yorkshire Police Homicide and Major Inquiry Team. The force is absolutely committed to improving women's safety in West Yorkshire and in fully investigating all reported offending. Image We call her the monster, Star Hobson's family say they can no longer say the name of toddler's killer. Star Hobson died in September 2020 from utterly catastrophic injuries that she received at her home in Keithley, West Yorkshire, with five referrals made to social services in the previous eight months by concerned family and friends. Star Hobson's family no longer say the name of the toddler's killer, she is simply referred to as the monster. Speaking about the events leading to her niece's murder, Star's aunt, Alicia Zeppola, told Sky News how she warned social services and police the toddler was at risk, but it was left feeling no one was listening to me. She said, the day that it happened, I knew it wasn't an accident. I knew that I was right, and they should have listened. Warning, this story contains distressing details about the abuse and subsequent death of a child. Sixteen-month-old star was murdered by Savannah Brookhill while the child's mother Frankie Smith was found guilty of causing or allowing her death. The pair were in a toxic, abusive relationship, and Starr suffered terrible cruelty from both Smith and her girlfriend for months before she was beaten to death by Brockhill in September 2020. Three months before the murder, Ems Zeppelin made the difficult decision to report her sister to social services and then later to the police after growing increasingly concerned for the child's welfare. Ems Zeppelin has shown Sky News an email she sent to the police, with images of Star's bruised face and testimony and text messages from another sister that she had seen Smith slap her across the face. She says the police never got back to her, and she had similar fruitless exchanges with social services. This is a transcript of the Snapcat conversation sent to police. Sister, I've just seen Frankie slap her across the face. X. Alicia, OMG. Sister I'm fuming X. Alicia, tell Nana X. Sister, KX. Alicia, something bad is going to happen. Why did she hit her? Sister, cause she was playing with her shoe. I can't ever speak to her again. Around this time, police and social services took the child to hospital to be checked up, but accepted her injuries were accidental. This was already the second time police had seen Star with bruising. Family and friends made a total of five referrals, but Ems Zeppelin now says she wishes she had taken things into her own hands. She said, I was just angry, every day because no one was listening to me. I felt like all I could have done was taken her and run off with her. Ems Zeppler gave evidence against her sister in court. Although they were once best friends, she said of her sister, I just can't ever speak to her again. I was literally screaming at Frankie, you don't have to be with that girl, we can call the police, we can get a restraining order. I don't know if she didn't believe me, or she didn't want to. I just feel angry because I think if that was me, if that was my child, I would have got away. I would have got out of that situation, no matter what. So, I can't forgive that. The case in Bradford revealed disturbing details of the toddler's short life, including a clip captured on CCTV of Brockhill repeatedly punching Star in the face and stomach over a three-hour period, nine days before the murder. The toddler was also filmed being dragged through Bradford Town Centre by Smith and crawling painfully up the communal staircase to her mother's flat. As well as the abdominal injuries that caused her death, a post-mortem examination found Starr had more than 30 separate injuries including rib fractures, two breaks in her right tibia caused by forced twisting, and a 12 centimeters fracture on the back of her skull from days before her death. 
The case opened familiar questions about how repeated warnings about the toddler's welfare were not acted on by local authorities. Like all of those who loved Star, Ems Zeppler remembers the toddler as an amazing little girl with a big smile and big eyes. Video shows the pair playing together and kissing each other. They are in sharp contrast to the unresponsive child in films with her mother, and in particular the mother's lover. Ems Zeppler recalls, she loved music. My granddad would play the guitar and my nan had a washer dryer, and she'd always bang it and make a noise. She loved music and dancing. Star's happiest days were the three months she lived with her great-grandparents in early 2020. David Fawcett and Anita Smith looked after Star when her mother was struggling to cope. Smith had split up with Star's further and found a new lover, Brookhill. Frankie is my sister, but you have to follow your gut. In April 2020, Smith took Star back into her care to a flat in Keithley. Five months later, the toddler would be dead. Social services had already had one warning from a friend of Smith's over concerns of domestic violence and bruising, but in May 2020 Star's great-grandmother Anita contacted authorities again after hearing reports the little girl was being slam-choked. This is where someone is picked up by the neck and thrown down. Ems Zeppela says she was interviewed at this point and told social services she too had concerns. I just had a feeling that something wasn't right. Frankie is my sister, but when you get a gut feeling, you have to follow your gut feeling. Smith and Brockhill told caseworkers the referrals were malicious because the family didn't accept their gay relationship. The case was closed, and the couple blocked the family members who'd spoken to social services from visiting Star, meaning she lost contact with the only people trying to protect her. Ems Zeppela says, it just hurt me that somebody is calling me malicious because I'm trying to protect my niece. I just thought if they don't believe me, then who is going to believe me? Family feels let down by social services. A month later, after seeing more evidence of bruising, both Ems Zeppela and Star's father made referrals, and this is when she was asked to email the photos of Star in her cot with bruising. Again, the case was closed after Smith told authorities Star had sustained her injuries falling onto a coffee table. The last time Ems Zeppela saw Star was in August 2020, the month before she was murdered. She says, she just looked tired. There were eye bags. She wasn't as chunky. She looked sad. Star was killed on the 22nd of September 2020, by being beaten or stamped on suffering catastrophic internal injuries. Both Brockhill and Smith claimed to be out of the room and that they'd heard a bang. But from the outset, Ems Zeppela didn't believe them, I said to my mum, I know that's a lie, I said to my mum, you do know they are going to arrest Frankie now? A few days later she got arrested and from that day I just decided I can't speak to her. Timeline of calls to social services during eight months of abuse. Ems Zeppela says the whole family feels let down by the authorities. It's not like just one person reported it, she says. There were five different people from Star's family or close friends who reported it. That seems like a big failure. They just thought that all of Frankie's family were being malicious, and they just decided they'd taken their side. That's what it felt like, it felt like the social services were against us. I think they need to be more on the ball, and time is crucial. Frankie was texting her social worker saying we've got a sickness bug, can we rearrange? And she was just replying, no worries, whereas they should be like, no, you can't rearrange, this needs to be followed up, I need to see you today. We just called her the monster. On the day Star died, she'd had a social services visit delayed by her mother. Last week, Bradford Council was stripped of responsibility for running children's social care. A review into social services, due to be published in January, has been delayed. Weeks after Starr's death, West Yorkshire Police referred itself to the Independent Office for Police Conduct, IOPC.
A spokesperson for the force told Sky News, We are unable to comment at this time as there is an ongoing IOPC investigation. In December last year, Smith was sentenced to eight years in jail. Brockhill was given a minimum term of 25 years. Asked about Brockhill, M. Zeppela said, I don't have words. In our family we don't even say her name, we just call her the monster. She took Star. She took Frankie. She just destroyed the whole family. Some people say these things are supposed to bring families closer together, but it's just ruined our family. She said of Smith, Some days I wake up and I miss her. I think about when we were younger and all the memories we had together. But it will never be the same again. I will love her in private, but I just can't ever speak to her again, I just can't do it. Learning Lessons Kirsten England, chief executive of Bradford Council, described Starr's murder as tragic and deeply upsetting. She added, The Bradford Partnership has already said that it is sorry for the death of Starr and that we did not do more to prevent her murder. We are unable to comment further until the local child safeguarding practice review is published except to say that we will be fully committed on making sure the recommendations from the report are in place. We are completely focused on improving children's services in Bradford District. We have also welcomed the announcement by the Department for Education that the Independent Child Safeguarding Practice Review Panel will consolidate the local child safeguarding practice review for Star Hobson into its national review of the murder of Arthur Lab and Joe Hughes. These are two shocking murders and it is vital that learning from both these cases is used to help safeguarding agencies up and down the country to better protect children. Police are appealing for witnesses to a serious road traffic collision involving a cyclist in Leeds yesterday. At about 4.10 p.m. on Thursday, a collision occurred on the B6481 Pontefract Road, at the junction with the A639 Wakefield Road, Sturton, involving a white man HGV tractor unit and a pedal cycle. The cyclist, a 38-year-old man, was taken to hospital with serious injuries and is continuing to receive treatment. His condition is not considered life-threatening. Anyone who witnessed the collision itself or the movements of either vehicle leading up to it, particularly anyone with relevant dash cam footage, is asked to contact PC 6783 Worse Knop of the Roads Policing Unit via 101 Quoting Reference 13220062527 or online via West Yorkshire Pulse Live Chat. The Mass Singer is approaching all UK arenas with a well known tour. The TV promotion is known for having famous singers, artists, Comedians and people in the line of entertainment dressing up as a character where the audience and people at home have to guess who the celebrity basically is. It's sitting a tour in live um, on stage at all UK arenas. They're going to Leeds, they're going to Manchester, they're going to Birmingham and many, many more. So check out www.massingalive.com for more information. Saxon are hitting a UK tour. So check out www.saxon.com for more information on that one with special guest Girl School. ABBA are also hitting a UK major tour to celebrate their new album and the album will be out on the 4th and 5th of November. Alberta Bocelli is also hitting a UK tour. For more information visit albertabocelli.com for more information. Guns N' Roses are hitting a well big massive tour in London, Glasgow and many many more. So visit all the www.gunsandroses.com for more information on that one. Also Slash is releasing a new album with Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators as well. So check out www.slashonline.com for more information on that one. Ed Sheeran is hitting a UK tour this year as well. Hitting major UK arenas like Sheffield, Glasgow, Leeds... And Manchester, visit all the reviews. Ed Sheeran dot com for more information on that one. Jeff Beck is also hitting a major UK tour in May and June. So check out the review dot Jeff Beck dot com for more information on that one. We have the phenomenal 
Stone Dead Festival on the 27th of August 2022. So visit all of the dot com for more information on that one. Tickets at the moment for the full weekend are £60. Hello Smith are hitting a UK tour. Starting off on the 22nd of June in London, then Manchester the 28th and then Sheffield the 1st of July. Featuring support act The Rival Sons. For more information on that one, visit www.aerosmith.com Lamb of God are hitting a UK tour. So for more information on the Lamb of God and where they will be playing, visit www.lambofgod.com Go West and Paul Weller ha eating a UK tour. For more information, visit paulweller.com. Saxon are hitting a major UK tour in November. For more information, visit saxon.com. Ghost are hitting a fantastic UK tour and Europe in April. For more information, visit allthewheels.ghost.com. They'll be eating Manchester, London, Glasgow and Birmingham. Alex Cooper have released a that it will be heading on a tour with a brand spanking new album with support and the cult. They will be doing London, Manchester, Glasgow, Birmingham and Leeds. For more information, visit all the views dot alexcooper.com King King are hitting a UK tour in 2022 for more information visit www.kingking.com after previously being postponed due to COVID-19 and David Coverdale's illness the following tour that was scheduled will be going ahead in 2022 in May, featuring the phenomenal White Snake, Foreigner, and Europe. For more information, visit whitesnake.com. And if you are thinking about going to any of these events, please visit all the websites for the latest government guidance on COVID 19, which can be found on the Arena Theatre or where the performance is taking place. Terms and conditions, and please stay safe and look after yourselves if you are going out and enjoying live music. And please support live music and live entertainment because without their your support and you going and visiting them, they will not be able to continue. Dusty Treble says customer loophole has cost jobs at his takeaway. When some customers want free food, they don't know what will happen next to other people. A takeaway owner who began a city-wide backlash against online delivery giant Just Eat says he has had to let some of his best staff go over the issue. Restaurateurs across Merseyside shared their frustration after Just Eat changed its procedures and removed an option for takeaway owners to challenge refund requests from customers before the money is returned. Invoices seen by the Echo show refunds given, after food has been delivered with reasons including cold food or damaged items, which the restaurant owners claim are fraudulent and leave them unfairly out of pocket. But parting ways with Just Eat represents a risky step for small takeaways, with some telling the Echo more than 70% of their takings come via orders placed with the company. Idris Nasrati said his business Lazio Pizza, in Green Lane, Old Swan, has taken the plunge and cancelled his Just Eat membership. He told the Echo, I left Just Eat and I sent the device back to them, and now a few more shops they are just switching off three or four days a week and they don't accept any new customers from Just Eat. It affected my business but unfortunately I had to reduce my staff and drivers. That was so sad for me to lose my best staff, but I had no choice and it wasn't my fault. When some customers want free food they don't know what will happen next to other people. Some people they lose jobs because they want to have a free meal and some big company like Just Eat they don't care about small businesses. Mr. Nasrati had previously described how he and his fellow business owners believe they have been unfairly treated by Just Eat, which already takes 14% commission on every order alongside a 50p flat admin charge. He formed a WhatsApp group of fellow takeaway owners to share their experiences of dealing with Just Eat. Another member, Hottie Haggy, owner of the Little Italy Takeaways in Magal and Breck Road, told the Echo in November, Just Eat is bigger than us, we need to be together to take it on. The Echo reported last year how some unscrupulous customers of the Delhi Group Takeaways in St. Helens were forcing owner Mark Faulkner into serious financial difficulties. 
some people had discovered they could receive a refund from Just Eat simply by claiming their orders had not arrived, leaving the takeaway owners footing the bill, and safe in the knowledge their claims would not be checked. Just Eat says that its restaurant partners can still challenge the request retrospectively, and if the refund was incorrect or based on a fraudulent claim the money will be returned. The company also said customers who appear to be abusing the system could have their bank cards blocked and accounts suspended. Masood Shams, owner of Napoli Pizza in Stanley Road, Boodle, previously told The Echo his business has lost hundreds in a few weeks. He said, the reason we started this group is that Just Eat has changed their policy regarding refund to customers without informing their partners. So the loophole is customers can order the food and Just Eat will send them an email saying are you happy with your meal? And if you're not you can get a refund. So people think to themselves if I can get some of my money why not? So they're putting for refund and Just Eat pay them back in the amount they have asked for. But we still get charged for full commission for the order. I have spoken to the area manager regarding this issue and simply she said that's the policy. It is wrong, they are not giving away their own money they are giving away small businesses money. We are struggling in this pandemic, we have staff to pay and all other bills. I am even thinking closing Just Eat because it's better to close it before I get bankrupt. One set of invoices, shared by Siren Rashid, owner of Rio Pizza on Queen's Drive, showed hundreds of pounds worth of refunds, including three adding up to £55 all registered on October 22nd for cold food. Just Eat previously told The Echo the new system is designed to try and find a balance of fairness between restaurant and customer and described fraudulent refunds as rare. A spokeswoman for the company said, just Eat is only successful if our restaurant partners are successful and we have a track record of helping restaurants prosper. The recent measures we've put in place is to ensure an even fairer refunds process for all, such as increasing the time for restaurants to raise any disputes. We actively take steps to ensure our partners are fairly compensated whenever we're made aware of any activity relating to non-genuine refunds. We're keen to maintain an open dialogue with the restaurants on our platform and continue to review our policies and processes in this space to support both customers and restaurants alike.